Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back for week 9 of the NPL. This week we are taking on my boy Dallas and Dallas Cartanas. He took over for another Texas team. Uh, Trev, who uh, decided to leave us, unfortunately, uh, done with league format. Uh, for the time being, we'll see if he ever returns, but uh, Trev's still around in the community, great guy, love having him around. Dallas is back in the NPL, uh, he was there for up until Season 6, I believe, uh, maybe halfway through Season 7, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, he has made his return, and we are taking him on this week. Uh, Trev's, team was one, uh, Trev's team was one of the teams that I was uh, fearing playing, uh, looking at the matchup, I had a very difficult time uh, prepping for this team. Finding checks to his offense, uh, well, Dallas's offense now, uh, is very difficult. Mega Mawile, with the team that I have, is nearly impossible to switch into. Uh, Cloyster being the only thing that is able to eat a hit. Um, everything else does not eat a hit from Mega Mawile. Like, my main defensive options, uh, Yuxi does not take knockoff. Uh, Meloetta doesn't take knockoff or play rough. Like, Como doesn't take it. Uh, Mega Arrow can't take Iron Head. Neither can Coco. Like, there's just... Too much that Mawile can bring, and then I still have to prep for Salamence, Calm Mind Reuniclus, uh, Life Orb or Specs Starmie, uh, Offensive Nido Queen. There's a Blaziken there. There's a Dual Dance Rhyperior. Uh, Rotom Frost is a problem to my team because I don't switch into its Dual Stab well. Like there's just there's just way too much on his team. So um, what I decided to do for this week, uh, because this result doesn't really matter, um, I've made playoffs at this point. Uh, if you guys didn't watch last week's video, then definitely go and do so, but we did clinch playoffs uh, as a result of our Week 8 win. So, uh, I decided, you know what, uh, I'm going to take it a little bit easier this week. Uh, I'm going to, well, easier. I actually went hard, uh, as you guys are going to see, but uh, basically what I decided to do was uh, bring something that I hadn't brought yet, and that's Hyper Offense. Uh, so, you guys are going to see the team, it's, it's really geared toward... Uh, just going crazy <laughs> against against uh, Dallas's team. So first one we have here Captain Crunch Coco making it this week with a uh, Tapunium Z first time I'm running that uh, with Nature's Madness Grass Knot Hidden Power Ice and of course main stab being Thunderbolt My idea here is his his switch ins to uh, Electric moves are uh, his Nidoqueen and his Rhyperior those come in on a Z um, a Z Nature's Madness a Guardian of Alola and they die to Hidden Power Ice or Grass Knot, respectively. Uh, so that's how I'm going to get rid of his checks to uh, to Coco. If he brings both, then he brings both, but that means that he's also less offensively oriented uh, on his team, obviously. He doesn't need a lot of uh, offensive options to beat me, but it does mean that there's less scary things to deal with. So that was the mindset going in with this Coco. Uh, I actually have to find my uh, window where I have my team builder open. There it is. Uh, and I'm just going to slide it over here. There we go. Don't mind that. Anyway, uh, next up we got Mad. Diggersby coming with Yachi Berry. I expect to lead with this thing. Uh, there isn't much on his team that can knock this out immediately. I've got Earthquake, uh, Quick Attack, U-Turn, and Ice Punch. No return, unfortunately. Um, but I do have Ice Punch, which hits, of course, the Salamence, the Nido Queen, uh, the Rhyperior for super effective, even though, even though uh, Earthquake hits it harder. Uh, it's basically just to catch switches. Uh, essentially, it hits the Whimsicott as well. Uh, Earthquake pretty much hits everything else. Uh, Reuniclus, Mawile, I can U-turn out on Reuniclus as well. Um, the Blaziken, the Persian I can U-turn on. Uh, this this uh, array of coverage is, is really good for me. Uh, and Max Attack Adamant obviously means that things like uh, non-fully defensive Porygon 2 with an EV Light cannot check me well. Uh, I do have the Yachi Berry for its Ice Beam, uh, as well as uh, like Mega Mawile's Ice Punch. There's a lot of ice coverage that he can run on his team. Uh, so I'm, I'm covering quite a bit of it with the Yachi Berry. Uh, and then the speed is just to uh, outspeed, uh, what was it again? I think max speed, maybe I max speed Adamant and Blaziken, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It could be that, it could be something else. Uh, I'm looking at his team and I'm trying to figure it out. I think I just went like as much speed as possible, uh, and then a little bit of bulk. But uh, yeah, again, hyper offense, so keep that in mind. Next up we got Terror. Uh, coming with Earthquake, Stone Edge, Crunch, and uh, Stealth Rocks, Max Attack, Adamant once again. Uh, enough speed for his Starmie. Uh, obviously, um, sorry, I forgot to mention that, uh, that Coco had enough speed for his uh, base 110, which at this point I cannot remember what the heck that is. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at his team and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what is it again? Uh, and I don't, I can't see it. 
Uh, there is no base uh, 110 on his team, but uh, I, I think I was speed creeping his speed creep of something. But anyway, uh, moving on. Terror. Aerodactyl uh, coming with uh, Earthquake that hits the Mega Mawile, the uh, Nido Queen, Blaziken, uh, and the Rhyperior for super effective damage. Stone Edge hits the Salamence, uh, as well as the... Uh, the Rotom Frost for super effective damage, mainly the Salamence, that's what I wanted to cover. Uh, Stone Edge does give me an out to his Rotom Frost, though. Uh, I've got Crunch on there, which hits the uh, uh, the Starmie and the Reuniclus for super effective. Uh, and then just Stealth Rocks, because I'm going to need Rocks if I'm going to be running Hyper Offense. I need to break Sashes. So, uh, next up we got a Mon that I've, uh, I've been dying to use, uh, actually, uh, since the beginning of the season, which is uh, Meloetta, but Pirouette. Uh, as you can see, we have Relic Song on this set. Uh, I am Max Attack Adamant with a uh, Max Speed Nature as well. Uh, max Speed Investment, excuse me. With Close Combat, Ice Punch Knockoff, and uh, Relic Song. Very similar coverage to uh, Arrow, actually, in the fact that it has Dark uh, and... Uh well, actually, just just dark, uh, but it has ice punch just like Diggersby, uh, and it's got its fighting stab, which is really good uh, against this team against the Persian, the uh, Rhyperior, the Porygon too, especially. That's going to be my main way of breaking it. Uh, I've got knockoff for the uh, Reuniclus for the Starmie, and then uh, close combat just hits everything really, really hard. Ice punch again, mainly for the Salamence. I do outspeed it uh, if it doesn't have a Dragon Dance up or if it's not scarfed, uh, and that also covers the New Queen because I can't hit it super effectively with uh, with my other stab being uh, well with my main stab that I'm bringing being close combat. Got a life. Uh, life orb for extra damage uh, because I don't expect to, <laughs> to need to take hits with this thing realistically so much damage output as possible uh, moving on we got Sasaki our Samurai coming coming for the first time we got liquidation Megahorn Aqua Jet Swords Dance with a mental herb the very interesting set uh, what I expect is his Whimsicott to come in on me if I Swords Dance on a free turn uh, like against something for example uh, Needle Queen right it can't knock me out from full uh, I get up a Swords Dance, he goes into his Whimsicott, tries to Encore me, Mental Orb pops, Megahorn knocks him out, uh, if he's not, like, max defense. So, that's gonna cover that, and then Liquidation and Aqua just, Aqua Jet just put in work on his team, uh, like, cr crazy amount of work. The only thing I can't really hit is, is the Salamence, but everything on, everything else on my team right now can hit Salamence, so I'm not worried about that, uh, I expect to get rid of that early on if it does come. Uh, and then, of course, uh, just... Uh, torrent boosting the uh, the plus two aqua judge is going to be mental uh, and then finally we got shy poof uh, our hustle Durant's choice scarfed once again uh, second time I'm bringing the scarf uh, iron head x scissor aerial ace and baton pass uh, I think I've explained this set a few times now uh, baton pass for momentum max attack adamant uh, the speed is enough to tie his Salamence, uh, I believe, Max, uh, I should have put four more EVs in there I don't know why I didn't uh, Ad adamant Salamence essentially Pick it off with an Aerial Ace. Uh, I don't expect him to go max speed with his Salamence either, so I think that's why I just went max, uh, well, up to 299. Uh, and that also covers Rotom Frost. I think that's what I was covering was Rotom Frost, because that hits 298. So if he brings that Scarfed, I do outspeed it. Uh, and uh, the coverage should be pretty obvious against this team once again. It's, it's pretty straightforward, so uh, very short team builder. We're going to hop right into the battle. And uh, I'm going to bring that up right here. We're going to go to... Where the heck did I leave it? All right, it's over here. Uh, yeah, let's go. There we go. All right, uh, Dallas Gartanas and uh, Montreal Habsalls facing off in Week 9. As you can see, uh, Dallas's record is 3-5 and five, uh, with uh, combined with Trev's record. We are 7-1, and one, plus 18, looking very good. I see his team. I see the Rotom Frost. I see no Salamence. Interesting. Uh, I do see the Porygon 2, the Reuniclus. So I know looking at this team, I'm like, okay, Meloetta is going to put in work. Uh, because it outspeeds everything, there's nothing that it, that it doesn't outspeed, and uh, unless he's got Scarfers, of course, and uh, I can just spam attacks against him. It's it's really, really clean. So I'm going to lead off with Diggersby, uh, because I can get off a U-turn immediately. He leads off with his Rotom, and, and right away I, I notice that my team cannot switch into this thing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, uh, that was probably a big miscalculation on my part, not bringing something that can deal with this. I'm going to click a U-turn, he's going to go for the Blizzard, he's going to connect. Gonna get off a uh, good, nice 63% on me. Gonna go for the U-turn, and I'm gonna go out into my Scarf Durant, and he's going to switch out here. Gonna go into his Porygon too. I'm gonna go for the Iron Head. I see how much it does. 33. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna play for the flinch, and I actually get it right here. Uh, and I'm going to Iron Head again, and I miss. Uh, and he's gonna Thunderbolt. So luckily he didn't recover there. Uh, I'm gonna go for another Iron Head. I connect that one, and I knock out his Porygon too. Nido Queen comes in. Uh, I'm gonna switch out to Terror, knowing that he's probably going to Earth Power as he does. And uh, I'm thinking Shookaberry Nido Queen. Uh, regardless, I'm just going to Earthquake to pop it. 
uh, and he's gonna go for a nice beam. He's gonna bring me down low, and now it's a lot of 50-50s right here. Uh, I'm gonna back it up uh, to this turn. It's a lot of 50-50s right here. I can roost on his next potential ice beam to get me out of range of the one after it. Um, like really far out of range. Uh, I can um, go for another Earthquake uh, as he tries to click Earth Power predicting my Roost. Uh, and I can click Rocks. There's a lot There's a lot of things I can do. I can weaken his Nidoqueen with another Earthquake. I expect him to want to keep his Nidoqueen uh, relatively healthier uh, because my Coco is still at full. So I end up clicking Rocks here because I see that his team has potential uh, of... Uh, well, any Sash, I think, at this point would probably be broken, um, being the Nido Queen, uh, and I'm thinking that his Rotom is uh, Scarfed. Uh, in fact, I'm almost 100% sure that it's Scarfed. It comes in on me here as I go for Rocks. Uh, I'm going to switch out into my Diggersby and sack it to the Blizzard. Uh, I don't need Digs anymore. And I'm going to go into uh, Meloetta here, and I'm going to start... Uh, Start nailing some stuff with, uh, with Relic Song. Relic Song is going to do 38% of this Reuniclus. I see that it's not that bulky. We're turning, we turn into Pirouette form. Uh, I'm going to go for the knockoff. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a decently high roll. I uh, hit him on a Colber Berry uh, with knockoff, and I actually still end up knocking him out. Uh, so that's quite nice. He brings in his, uh, his Mawile. Uh, now, this is a little bit of a misplay. Uh, obviously, I said in the Team Builder, I don't have switch-ins to Mawile. However, I'm at minus one. Uh, if I come back in with Lyra... Uh, on a later turn, uh, Dallas has no switch-ins to me at all. Uh, but you guys are going to see that the Life Warp Close Combat, uh, close combat is going to do 56%. Uh, I could have easily just chipped this thing away uh, with uh, with something like Arrow, Arrow's Earthquake or Iron Head from uh, Durant. But they were both at uh, they were both chipped away, and I didn't want like crit sucker punches getting in the way. So I ended up just attacking them all while, uh, just making sure that uh, Coco's Thunderbolt could take it out. Uh, but as you're going to see here, uh, I knew that he would probably go Nidoqueen, uh, but I decided to click T-Bolt anyway because Mawile is way too big of a threat, and he does go Nidoqueen. Uh, and I'm going to go for the Guardian of Alola, knowing that he probably will not click uh, a Poison move here on this turn because I could switch into Durant. Uh, and I'm going to get the uh, Nidoqueen as it goes for Rocks. I'm going to hit it up with an HP Ice, knock it out on the following turn. He goes into Whimsicott. Uh, I'm going to go for another HP Ice as he goes for a Giga Drain and actually ends up doing quite a bit, 43%. Uh, and he heals a lot as well because he has leftovers. Uh, gonna go for another HP ice. I'm just trying to keep this thing low, essentially in range uh, of where my Aqua Jet later can take it out. And uh, he's gonna go for Nature Power here, revealing that he has Nature Power. That is priority uh, because it's a status move. Uh, as I learned in week one, when I tried to bring it on an Assault Vest Amoongus and that didn't work. Um, so, yeah, as, uh, he's got nature power, he knocks me out, I thought I would be able to get off some more chip on him, but I don't. Uh, so, here, right here, I'm forced into arrow, I'm forced to click uh, Stone Edge. Uh, as he goes for nature power, that's obviously going to do nothing, because it's normal right now. Uh, and I'm going to knock out the Whimsicott, he's going to go out into his Rotom, uh, and he is going to click Thunderbolt, he's going to knock me out. Thunderbolt knocks out the rest of my team from here. However, he is Choice Scarfed. Uh, I know this for a fact now, because he just came in on my Aerodactyl, and he's faster than me. So... Um, I have a few plays. Um, I can go into, uh, well, I have one play, which is Durant. But I have a few plays once the Durant comes in. I can click, uh, Iron Head. Guaranteed knocks out the Rotom. Um, his Mawile's at 38%, by the way. His Mawile is currently at 38%. Uh, you guys saw my set in the Team Builder. If you didn't, I have Baton Pass, I have Iron Head, X Scissor, and Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is resistant. The reason that I don't click Aerial Ace here is because I don't want Mawile coming in on a predicted Aerial Ace. And in my head, after the game, I'm like, why would Mawile ever switch in here? <laughs> it makes no sense. So my play here was to click Aerial Ace. However, I click Iron Head and unfortunately Shia Poof misses for the second time in the game so uh, unfortunate there that one mattered a lot however that is my misplay uh, that's an Adam level misplay from week one when he didn't click HP fire with his superior if you guys missed that game definitely go and check that out he had the guaranteed win and he uh, he threw it because he clicked Leaf Storm as opposed to HP fire on a Kabutops uh, same thing here I wouldn't have knocked out Rotom however you guys are gonna see from the Aqua Jet damage from my uh, from my Samurott here in a second He's going to be left at 10%. Hustle, Aerial Ace, to a Rotom does, I believe, min 14. So, Aerial Ace would have put this thing in range of Aqua Jet. And Liquidation to a max HP Mawile, which 
Dallas ended up being, max HP, max attack, brave, um, is min 34%. And he comes in on rocks, he ends up at 32. So I had this game, uh, and I threw it because I didn't click aerial ace. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I was just clicking buttons the whole game. You guys could see that I was just like hitting close combat on the mall. I was like, whatever, who cares? Meloetta goes down, I can revenge this thing after. Uh, that's, that's kind of the mindset I went into this game with because uh, I know that my position is very unlikely to change uh, from first in conference. And um, if I end up in a little bit of a lower position because like, for example, let's say Rob passes me, then that's not the worst thing either. Um, because some of the people that are really low uh, in the standings right now that would be making playoffs are very, very scary threats to me. <laughs> uh, and their teams especially. People like Merc, who I had such a hard time time with um, the first time we played. Uh, and I'm, I don't have Fortress anymore for his Kartana. Uh, things like that. Like, I'm, I'm just looking at some of these matchups and I'm like, I don't want to either play these again or play these at all. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, that's, you're gonna, I'm gonna have to play them eventually because we're in playoffs. But, um, but yeah, that's what I, that's the mindset that I went in with. I was like, you know what? It doesn't really matter uh, if I get a loss here. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. I brought, uh, I brought Hyper Offense. Uh, I don't know how to build a meme team, but you guys, uh, you guys are going to see, uh, something of the sort next week uh, against Maddie. Uh, if you have uh, spoilers, uh, for Maddie's game, if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely go and do so in the uh, description down below. Oh, also guys, go and check out Dallas's side of the, uh, the game. Uh, I'm sure his commentary uh, is great. I actually haven't had a chance to check it out yet. This recording is going up late uh, because I haven't had time for anything uh, this weekend. So I haven't had a, ch a chance to check out his game yet, but I definitely will go and check out his commentary. But uh, if you haven't checked out Maddie's game yet, go and check it out. You'll see that his differential, uh, our records are, uh, he's six and three, I'm seven and two. Uh, so if Maddie beats me, he ties me in record. However, our differential is too far apart. Uh, because I'm currently at plus 16, and I believe Maddie is at plus uh, 3, and the best that he could do is 6 Omi, which would still put me above him in terms of differential. Uh, so it's it's okay if I'm talking about my team before we play, after we play, it doesn't matter when I'm talking about my team, but I'm pretty much bringing uh, as best as I could do of a meme team against Maddie. So that's going to be an interesting game next week. You guys are definitely going to want to check that one out. I'm bringing some pretty interesting sets. Uh, yeah, very very interesting stuff uh, that I threw together really, really quickly. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's it for this week, guys. Unfortunately, we do take a loss, but uh, this one didn't bother me too much. Uh, I believe this is Dallas's first win back in the NBL, NPL, so congrats to him. Uh, I'm glad I was able to, to give him a win, you know. Uh, for me, like I said, it doesn't really matter, so... Uh, it's, a, it's an honor playing you, my friend. Uh, it's the first time that I actually got to, got to play Dallas. Uh, I know how good of a player he is. And uh, next week is the first time that I get to, I get to play Maddie as well. So a lot of firsts this season. Uh, really, uh, really happy about uh, about who I got to play this season and uh, and who I got to, to know better as well this season. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, again, if you did enjoy, as always, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you have not already. And I will catch you guys next week. Ciao.